What's up, Zach here with Dr. Eyeball MD. Tomorrow, full day of cataract surgery. I'm gonna take you along, we'll go through the cases. Tonight is the night before, and so beforehand I have the cards for the patients. And so I review them all, you know, the week before, make sure that the lens calculations are good, and that we're gonna be putting the right lenses in everybody's eyes, that all the calculations make sense. I had to bring one patient back because he had really bad corneal readings, corneal topography readings, because he had an old chemical injury to the eye, so I brought him back, repeated those today, got better calculations, and so we will try to put a better lens in his eye. And tomorrow, we will actually do the surgeries. If you guys are new, I'm a third year ophthalmology resident and on the channel, I am trying to help you make it through medicine as easy as possible and try to give you some tips along the way, simplify the process. You can learn from some of the mistakes that I make. All right, so 7 a.m. right now. I know, a little bit late, but should make it on time at a 35 minute drive. So I'll head out that way and we should get there in time to uh, get the first patient marked and all. Should be good. All right, it's 7.40, just about to get to the hospital. Um, the second year on call just texted me and said that she has a cantilicular lack. She thinks it might be a cantilicular lack. Eyelid laceration in the ER. So we have seven phacos today and then a, a blepharoplasty. So we might have to add this on um, into the OR at the end of the day if it is a cantilicular laceration, if it's just marginal involving. Um, we can go close it in the ER at some point later after surgery. Anyways, I'm about to get there, so we'll go find the first patient. All right, go ahead and put on my scrub hat that I made, and along with my mother-in-law who sewed it for me, head into the hospital and I'm gonna head up to the locker room and kind of get ready uh, for N95 to get into the hospital. Go ahead, hydrate, because it gets super dehydrated while I'm operating, so bring a Gatorade. I get one of these no fog masks because otherwise when I'm breathing, the breath goes up and fogs up the oculars and I can't see. So here at the sink, and I'm gonna go ahead and scrub here in a minute. And I brought my tiny little Sony tiny speaker so I can play whatever music I want. I can adjust the volume during the case just to look here at some of the stuff and we'll go ahead and get into the first case so I sped it up just for time's sake go ahead and make a main wound there nick those limbal vessels so we get good healing like cataract coach teaches stained with tripan blue here because the cortical component probably didn't need to but just went ahead and did that making a capsular rexus and I don't like to re-grab sub incisionally if I can avoid it because it's a little harder to re-grab there if you let go of it I'm trying to make a good five five and a half millimeter circular capsule rexus speeding ahead here to the nucleus removal using the chopper here to kind of sub chop the hemi nucleus in the ac flip that other one around into a good position to pull it out try to decide where i'm going to take it and then trying to sub chop some of the pieces off uh, so that i can emulsify it more easily trying to work within the center of the eye at the iris plane for the emulsification there get the cortex out lens going in the bag Go ahead and try to rotate those haptics, superior and inferior, so that when we go in to remove the visco here, we can go behind the lens if we need, which I'm doing right here, to get all the visco out from behind the lens. That's going to be really important when we're doing torx, multifocals, that kind of thing, so our lens doesn't decenter. First case is done and went really well, uh, super quick. I just did a stop and chop, sort of. I uh, just grooved, split it, as you saw in the video and then brought the hemis up and chopped them in the AC, which was really easy. Just trying to get a better feel for the chopper, so um, just kind of doing an graduated approach. Next case um, should be an easy one as well. We flip-flopped the second and third, so we'll do the second, which is the more difficult case with the chemical burn and the sneaky A. We'll do that next. We'll do the second case, which also should be pretty straightforward. We have a pretty large consignment of lenses here. We have really any one we want to use, if we want to use multifocals and all, because Alcon is right down the street and they provide those things which is very nice here I'm just going over some of the parameters of the next eye moderate density lens good pupil it's supposed to be straightforward case a lot of cortical component go ahead and make the para inject tripan blue because of that cortical component and wash that out with a little bit of BSS solution we've already put a block in good main wound 
making the limbo vessels we'll go ahead and make the rexus here and go ahead getting the cortex removal all that's done lens in the eye unfolding and case went fine and so let's move on to the next case this is one that was a little more challenging this is the patient that had the chemical burn you can see the sneak down pupil which uh, I broke the sneakia nasally with the cannula and I'm going in with the Malugan ring and I'm able to go ahead and get two of the eyelets to catch on the iris there and then we'll go in with the Maloney and place the last two eyelets this is our pupil expanding ring so that I can operate. I can't operate through a three millimeter pupil. And so now that we have the ring in, we can make a good capsular rex. There's no blue needed here. So we turn up the coaxial just to get a good red reflex. And what I like about these seven millimeter rings is it acts like a really good guide. So you know how big your capsular rex needs to be, just about a little smaller, a half to one millimeter smaller in size. I'll take the ring out. You can actually take the ring out with the injector. You can go in and grab it and it slurps it back up. The case went well, actually the one with the Sneak pupil. It wasn't Sneak as much as they had said that it was from his pre-op evaluation. It was actually only about like a couple clock hours nasally. So it was pretty easy just to break that with the cannula uh, and get, it, get a ring in there and then um, finish the case as usual. Pretty dense lens though. So I uh, did divide and conquer, split it into quads, took out a couple quads and then took the other piece out in a hemi because it didn't want to crack. So anyways. That was probably what I was, you know, the case I was most concerned about, um, but it went well. So the next case is a young guy. It's gonna be a soft lens. So what I may do is just kind of prolapse it with the hydro dissection and then go ahead and uh, just eat it without cracking or chopping. I may kind of sub chop it in the AC or something. We'll see. Let's go. So this case is actually not the case of the younger patient. I don't have that one to show here, so we're just gonna skip ahead to one of the last cases. Uh, really dense lens here, toric. I have marked the eye for a toric. Um, and go on ahead, make the capsular rexus, go in with our hydro dissection, get a fluid wave, and I'm pretty sure that it's gonna spin. I go ahead, gonna do divide and conquer here, and go ahead and make the full cross, just because of how dense this lens is. I think it might be a little more challenging to bring it up and eat the hemis. Um, so go ahead, spin it. 90 degrees, make that cross. Don't have to be too aggressive with the cross. It just needs to be deep enough and long enough to crack. I don't have to be, you know, skimming the surface of the capsule. Go here with the Drysdale, get a good crack. 90 degrees, crack. 90 degrees, crack. 90 degrees, and crack. Now we have four quads. It's going to be a lot easier to take out now. Go ahead and emulsify these in the iris plane and get those last couple pieces out of our nucleus. I have a little bit of cortex remaining. This is that tricky cortex that doesn't want to come out as big sheets and so you have to do a little bit of polishing to try to get some of that off. And because that was a denser lens it sometimes doesn't like to. Doing a little polishing of the underside of the anterior capsule here just to reduce chances of capsular phimosis later on and the need for potentially doing YAG to open that up. Put a little provis here in the eye and then we will go in with our lens. You don't have to get the injector all the way in the eye. If you put good horizontal traction, you can get the lens in without getting the injector fully into the anterior chamber. Here, take out that viscoat. I'm gonna rotate our, um, I do go behind the lens here to get that viscoat out like I was talking about so that our toric lens stays in place and that acrylic lens adheres to the capsule. It's a sticky lens and I want them touching. So I don't want viscoat behind the eye going behind the lens. Get the markers lined up, hydrate, and just reposition there a little bit. And it looks good. It's in position, and that case went perfect. Okay, so um, finished the phacos. They went well. And then did a uh, bilateral upper lip blepharoplasty with the plastics fellow. He did one side, I did one side. Both sides look good. We did a pretty large resection. Uh, so now I'm going to eat some meatballs and then go help the clinic finish up. Okay, so I ended clinic, um, saw a few patients. There's a patient with a retinal detachment who the retina fellow is gonna come do a pneumatic on. Um, and then surgeries went well. We finished up, went back and did a um, bilateral upper lid bliff with the plastics fellow. We each did a side. Um, myself, Dr. Tenzel, good times. 
Um, and then went to clinic, finished that up. So now we're gonna leave. Have two cataract surgeries tomorrow. Um, and then we'll see all the post-ops from today. Hopefully it won't freeze and people can get to clinic and they don't try to shut the clinic down. So anyways, good day. Okay, so that day's over. Um, things went well, surgeries went well. Um, lenses and bags, so that's good. Tomorrow we have two surgeries. Um, and so they should be pretty straightforward. Basically what we're gonna be doing tomorrow, take this jacket off, is gonna be first case, should be routine, good sized pupil, monofocal lens, it's gonna be a dense lens, a little on the denser side and a, a really significant posterior subcapsular cataract, so we're taking that out. Um, that's the second eye. Uh, this, the second patient is gonna be a pretty big eye, long axial length, big white to white, big myopic eye, uh, moderate density lens, good pupil. These should be straightforward cases. Um, so those should go well. After we do these surgeries, we're gonna go see our post-ops. Hopefully everybody's doing well. There's some really dense lenses today, so there may be a little bit of corneal edema, but that's okay and that'll go away in a few days. Also tomorrow, before we do the cataract cases, we have a bleftosis case. So we will go early and try to do that with the plastics fellow. Um, which is always fun. Um, assuming that it doesn't ice over tonight, which it is supposed to do, so hopefully we're able to actually drive out to the hospital. It's like 40 minutes away. Anyways, hopefully we can do that. But good day overall. Your destination.